This is Real Housewives of the Kingdom, a sweet space where you'll hear from the hearts of fellow housewives in the kingdom of God, some just like you and some really different in various walks of life. We will talk about how God is walking with us through the good and the hard. I pray you'll be encouraged and entertained as we laugh and sometimes cry together. Most of all, I hope it reminds you we're in this together and you are not alone. I am beyond excited to share that my guest today is none other than my sweet hubby, Kevin. Our 19th wedding anniversary is in five days, and I thought it would be perfect to have my sweet hubby, the one who made me a housewife on the show. We chat candidly about what marriage was like for us at the beginning, what we have learned along the way, and what we have not stopped doing since we said I do. We pray our conversation will encourage you in your marriage and your relationship with God. We hope that you can see why we say marriage really isn't hard. It just takes intention. During this episode, my hubby and I do discuss sex within marriage. While we don't get very explicit, I just want to let you know that I would highly recommend you don't listen to this episode when little ears are present. Hello, everybody. I would like you to welcome my sweet hubby to the show. He is my favorite human on the face of this planet, and uh, I am excited to have him here with me on the show. I'm glad to be here. Yay. And we are talking about being married for almost 19 years. In a few days is our anniversary, our 19-year wedding anniversary. And we're super excited to celebrate it because we always love celebrating our love. Um, But we just thought it would be really fun. Well, I thought it'd be really fun to do an episode with uh, with him and that we could just chat about all the things in our marriage that have been uh, good and that have been like encouraging to us and have enriched our marriage. And then also maybe talk about a few of the things that have uh that been you can challenging. <laughs> yeah been challenging exactly so um so that is why we're here to do an anniversary episode Woo! yay okay. <laughs> all right um so uh i don't know if you want to say anything about um i don't know about i, I guess i just introduced you so <laughs> you don't have to introduce yourself hey. oh my husband's name is kevin if you didn't already know that and um yeah so here we go. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So first, one thing about us is that we really, really love our marriage. And that is something that a lot of people see. And it's kind of a, um, a rare thing we've found. And that we've been really positive about, about our marriage since the beginning. Um, when we were dating, we discussed that. We discussed that we wanted to be positive about our marriage always now when we started dating did you think that there was like what did you think about marriage prior to meeting me and what did you think like once we started dating and actually realizing we wanted to get married did you kind of change your perspective on marriage at all change my perspective well i've always i always wanted to find one person Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. that I would go through the rest of my life with. So uh, it would always have to be somebody that divorce would not be an option. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, so I, I don't know that it, I don't know that it changed. I mean, I guess I might have assumed uh, based on just my prior, prior knowledge and all of I don't know, TV and film history mm-hmm. that, couples need to fight (laughs) so I think I may have started our marriage with a little bit of fight in me (laughs) see the fiery redhead if you're watching the video you can see that I married a hot fire (laughs) (laughs) but uh it didn't take long for you to get the message across that you don't have to fight and we'll get more into about what we consider fighting but yeah uh yeah it's it's wonderful it's <laughs> yeah. everything i want it to be and, and more because of <laughs> less of the fighting, fighting thing. <laughs> yeah yeah and one thing that we both always say is that marriage isn't hard and that's something that 
um, you know, a lot of people in society always say, well, marriage is hard. Even in, uh, you know, the Christian world, that is a very common thing. Well, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And that is something that actually um, is a bit controversial to us because we don't agree with that. And we think that marriage takes intention, but that it's not hard and you have to be selfless. Which can I, be hard, and I think that's the I think that's the thing, right? I mm-hmm. think that uh, because people have the tendency to be self-absorbed mm-hmm. and to assume that you get whatever you want, right. uh, that the hard part comes in relinquishing that power, yeah. compromising, mm-hmm. um, and and. You know, just trying to work together to make a bigger picture, a bigger dream mm-hmm. come true, uh, and and that that is where the work comes in. It work kind of comes in on on your yourself and mm-hmm. and allowing really good God to influence you to be more open and giving to your spouse. Mm-hmm. Make it, um, praying that God will make you the best person for your spouse. Yes. Yeah, that is lovely. I love that. And I totally agree. <laughs> we, um, you know, and we're not perfect. We, ha- we have Selfish disagreements. Moments. Yeah. Uh, we have times where we're hangry and, <laughs> you know. Me more than her. <laughs> He always says that, but I think I think I have my own moments. Just because, but not and not everyone displays their frustration or their whatever in the same way either. And that's something you learn um, from the beginning of marriage. And that's another thing I think why people think marriage is hard is that they, um, you know, they we want it easy, right? As people. We want things to be easy. Right. We want, you know, we have all these modern conveniences like, you know, washing, washer and dryers and um, dishwashers and, you know, all these things that make our life easy. And I think um, that take little to no effort to uh, have it help you help your life. And I think with relationships in general, when something, when you have to be selfless, because that fights against our human nature. Mm-hmm that's where it feels hard because you're going against yourself. Well, and I think not to get all Enneagram or anything, but <laughs> when uh, personalities make a huge difference. Yeah. And uh, I think that when you have two stronger personalities, so in an Enneagram, that would be two eights, two challengers. Mm-hmm. Uh, those kind of people getting married, there might always be a lot more headbutting. Mm-hmm. Whereas, we don't really have that, right. uh, primarily because you're. I'm a nine. A nine. I'm, a, I'm a peacemaker, and he's a seven, which is the enthusiast or the adventurer. Right, but I'm also like a two. I really like to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when I did the uh, gifts mm-hmm. uh, test, uh, my gift is giving. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I. I'm the one that has a little bit of more stronger personality and you give me Right, you can lead into but, your eight wings sometimes uh, with um, the challenger. Yeah, occasionally. Well, yeah. that normally comes in like tra- driving. Traffic. <laughs> traffic. <laughs> I actually like that. talked about that. So <laughs> the last episode uh, that I aired was with my friend Micah and we talked about the Enneagram a little bit and we discussed right. all, we discussed that. So if you don't know what the Enneagram is, go back and listen to my previous episode, episode seven, and uh, you can hear more about the Enneagram if you don't know what it is. But right. it's like and a personality test, basically. A quick thing, assuming that you already talked about that with Micah, but uh, is that even though you would be placed in an Enneagram classification, the goal is to be the stronger points, the more positive points of all Enneagram mm-hmm. numbers and to try and eliminate the negative side of all Enneagram yeah. numbers. So even if you are two eights in a marriage and the tendency is to butt head, you're, then you should challenge yourself as a challenger mm-hmm. to, uh, to, be, to be able to 
back down. Give in a little. Compromise. Yep, yep exactly. And use that challenger strength to defend your marriage and to mm-hmm. defend your spouse. Yeah, you because, want to challenge? Challenge Satan. He's yeah. trying to get your marriage down. And, and that goes for that goes for every marriage and every. Absolutely. The enemy, Satan, is absolutely always trying to absolutely. pull you apart yeah. because God created marriage to be a mirror image of what he did for us, for the church. And so that is why he attacks marriages so heavily. Yeah. So, And that's another reason why I think also people say marriage is hard because they feel that attack. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side of it, when you put in the intention you get this really joyful marriage like we have. Yay! Woo! <laughs> um, so I was thinking to start with kind of like the early years. So ni- 19 years. Um, it feels, it's weird because I feel like we've been together forever. But I, but yet it's also like insane to me that we've been together, that we've been yeah. married for 19 years. And often when we say when we tell people we've been married for 19 years, they're like so surprised because I don't know, they think we look young, which I guess is a really nice compliment. (laughs) That's um, because I married a young one. (laughs) There, uh, there's a little tip for you. (laughs) Yeah. Men who are married or men and women getting married out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so anyway, but I love that, that people see that kind of joyfulness in our marriage. And I think that's actually why they might be a little bit surprised because we seem very uh, honeymoon phase yeah. all the time. All, all the time. And we always say that. We always say, oh, we're still on our honeymoon because yes. we really do feel like that. Um, so one of the things that I would say in the early days of our marriage was like learning how to communicate. Um, and uh, we, <laughs> we had right out of the gate on our honeymoon, we had a little uh, communication challenge We went to Paris for our honeymoon, and um, I actually wrote a blog post about it, and I'll link that in the show notes um, as well, or link it in the show notes so you can go read it if you're interested to read more about it. But basically, we were hungry, we were tired. I wore shoes all over Paris that were like heels with like strappy heels. I know, brilliant. <laughs> um, in I know, I know, but I look so cute in the picture. <laughs> but it did make me a tad cranky and emotional. But we realized, and we had kind of our first little uh, disagreement um, on our honeymoon. And but we learned on that is that don't ever discuss anything when you're hungry no, well not anything major major hungry tired yeah um you know overwhelmed with something else big yeah. that's going on in life and that we kind of also learned to have a little grace and understand what's going on in a moment that that might not be that person's normal response but um you know but sometimes when those outer <laughs> Um, things are affecting, yeah. Yeah, affecting you, then it's a lot harder to communicate properly and nicely. So that was something that uh, we learned. And I feel like we actually started discussing that when we were dating, because I feel like there was like a time that we were driving and we kind of started like getting snippy with each other. And you said, wait, we're hungry. And I was like, you're right. We are hungry. And we totally stopped discussing whenever we were discussing. And we got food. And then after, it was like, oh, yeah. then it was like no problem to discuss yeah, it. Yeah, and you're usually really good at knowing when I'm hungry. <laughs> because I don't always feel hungry at the point that I'm cranky. And she goes, I need to get you food. I'm like, oh. And that's where the grace thing comes in and not getting love is not easily offended. And that is another really good tip for your marriage that to remember and uh, the grace thing, grace is the grace that keeps the marriage wheel spinning. So just have some grace. I mean, there are obviously things that, uh, like, if you are actually experiencing real abuse, then that's not okay. But we're talking about just regular day in, day out conflict, you know. Why did you put the toilet paper on that way? I don't know. You know, yeah. that kind of random stuff that can sometimes escalate into stupid uh, unnecessary yeah, yeah. Unnecessarily. things that are trivial things that that become big 
issues for no reason. Yeah. And I would say one of the, one thing that we implemented, well, when we started doing this, when we were dating actually, um, that we implemented early in our relationship that has been helpful and that we've continued is praying together and reading God's word together. Mm-hmm. Um, Kev did not grow up in a Christian home and I did. And so I knew, I, I knew the main Bible stories, although I don't feel like you ever really, no matter how many times you read the Bible, that I feel like it, I always learn something new every time I read through it. Um, but, uh, it was cool. It was a cool thing to do together because Mm -hmm. as an adult for me reading through again with Kevin was so fun because it was like, you know, he was, he had known some stories, obviously he had heard some things, but, um, it was cool kind of to do that together. Um, and then praying together every night. We started that when we were dating and we do that. We, without fail, before we go to bed, we pray Uh, out loud together. Pray before every meal, before every big decision and before bed every night. Yep. Yep. And those are... And more often than that, but those are absolute... Mm -hmm. That's non-negotiables. And the, and for us, I mean, I would say the only times we haven't is if like the random time we're on an overnight flight to another country like we used to we we met we were professional acrobats that's how we met and we used to travel um, the world still love traveling the world but we did that for work for a long time and uh we so there were very few times we did shows apart from each other but we did do a few and sometimes they were across the world and i would say that's probably the only time sometimes as if i was literally on a plane or you were on a plane when it was my nighttime or whatever your nighttime. I would Um, really encourage anyone listening, if you don't pray out loud in your marriage, which it can be uncomfortable. Did you feel, did you feel like when we first started praying together out loud, was it uncomfortable for you? Uh, maybe only for the first couple of times. I mean, I didn't, I hadn't ever really, uh, done it. So I didn't know what I was doing. Really. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I've talked to God, but mm. uh, even though I, I consider myself a non-believer, but I was talking to God because I was angry at God, and that's when you realize that you are not a non-believer. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, it, only maybe for the first couple of times it got easier and easier and easier. Mm, yeah. yeah, and it's just cool. And it's important to also pray alone as well and when you're by yourself or in your heart all day long. But is really solidifying and that's really helped us um, in our marriage uh, from the beginning. Um, The other thing that we do together uh, every day, except for obviously if we're not in the same city or place, is we shower together every single night. We shower together. Absolutely. We shower together. And um, uh, it is just a great bonding time and uh, it's uh, just serving each other we wash each other's bodies mm-hmm. not gonna get beyond graphic. yeah i'm not gonna get graphic about <laughs> it's it it's really hard to get your own back <laughs> yeah it is really hard and i probably have some of the cleanest like back and so does he because we actually <laughs> clean it <laughs> i don't know maybe that's gross <laughs> oh my gosh okay and then um <laughs> baby got clean back and i cannot lie <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I know that that, like some people we tell that to, they're a little taken aback by that. Like, oh, shower together? But well, I like my alone even, time. Even people that we've counseled say that it's still hard for them. Now, for me, I don't feel the need to sit under the shower head. So that actually, and Caroline does. So mm-hmm. That's not even a compromise. It's just a preference thing. Right. She likes it. I, I, I don't like it so much. So it works out for us. Now, if you have a cold bathroom and you both want to be under the shower head, yeah, obviously. Or you have little be... little tiny kids and one person can't that's be. That's another, yeah. that's another thing. Like, don't leave your two-year-old out with, you know, things available and be, like, in the shower. <laughs> like... Or play pens with them. <laughs> <laughs> I can play. <laughs> All right, 14-year-old, get in the back and play. <laughs> Oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> oh my god. But I would say even if you've never tried it or have very rarely tried it, I would encourage you even implement it like once a week as a start because mm-hmm. it's just a great time to chat and there's no other distractions and anyway, it's just a sweet time. 
Um, and then the other thing that we've done since the beginning is we go to bed at the same time. Mm-hmm. Always. Um, I mean, I sometimes fall asleep if we're watching a movie. And so, in that case, but we're next to each other on the couch. Not, uh, we don't ever do, oh, I'm going to bed and, well, I'm going to stay Eat another. at the same time. We generally eat the same meal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yep. It's very rare that we don't have this. Just doing food, life unless together. we're having two separate uh, right. uh, leftovers. But, uh, right, right. Yeah. Because sometimes we do that. Have the same meal. We eat at the same time. We go to bed at the same time. We generally wake up at the same time or close to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even, you know, there were times, so probably like, five-ish years in, um, he was working for uh, my happy, uh, who's my grandpa, uh, who's with Jesus now, Um, but uh, he had a construction company, and so he would get up really early and go work with him in construction, and this was during the recession when there was no entertainment work available, so we uh, were blessed that he had that construction work. And he would get up really early to do that. Well, really early for us. Which is like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I had to be at work at seven. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was really early at the time. Well, we were acrobats and we did shows and stuff. We were used so to we getting were, up at yeah. six o'clock like most of America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We we would like stay up till two and sleep till ten was like our normal because sometimes we had shows that honestly went till yeah. after ten. Yes, so, exactly. um, and when I say shows, I mean we were like, we were professional acrobats. We weren't like... You know, it wasn't some weird <laughs> show. It's just, just like, <laughs> hey, what are you doing today? Little puppy. Uh, oh man! Sorry, Tom. <laughs> That's okay. I love it. Um, but yeah. So, uh, but during that time, I remember I because he would just say, "Just stay in bed." You know, we lived up in the mountains at the time, and it was cold. And I did, there was like, I don't know how long it was that I did just stay in bed and sleep and then get up later. But then one day I realized if I get up when he gets up and see him off and then, you know, get the start our day together, I had so much time in the day. I would get so much done. I'd be able to spend time with the Lord. I'd be able to spend time uh, reaching out, meeting with friends, people, fellowshipping with people all before he got home from work. And then when he got home from work, we could spend time together and I could devote my whole time to just being with him. And so that, um, during that time was when I began doing that. So anytime we've had uh, that situation again, where he might have to be up early or whatever, and I didn't, I've, uh, now I get up when he gets up always, so. I mean, the, the hardest one was when I was doing overnights. That's true, but but I I did stay up. So his last, yeah, (laughs) maybe a little nap here and there, an hour nap here and there. It's tough because there's not a lot that you can do overnight. The TV shows aren't great. There's no one else online. You can't talk to your family. It's like... Yeah, it is a little weird. But it is like good time to like really be focused on the Lord, actually, because there's not really a whole lot of other... And that was actually so right before the pandemic... Uh, my he was a um, Disney Imagineer working on a project for Avengers Campus, and in the last the month before everything shut down, he was doing overnights for a series of several weeks, and I decided to just jump on his schedule with him overnight, um, and uh, and it was weird because I'm like. I was like, do a workout at like 3 a.m. and like, <laughs> like reading and talking to the Lord and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, and it was a little weird. And then the weirdest thing was the night where there was no power. They were had a schedule wow. shut off. And that was actually the la- his last I think overnight. I had two of those during my overnights. Yeah, but it, the other one didn't happen until later. Oh. One of them happened right when they said it was like 8 p.m. And so it, I literally had no power. So I had like candlelight. So I couldn't watch any movies or like TV shows or anything like that that I had like saved. Um, and uh, I just, I literally just like, you know, talked to the Lord and I read and um, it's definitely weird. And then it was weird that like right after that was the pandemic. It was like, okay, so this today feels weird. What's hap- What's coming? What's happening? Anyway, that's a whole nother situation. Now I'm rambling. Um, but uh, what's new? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so I was just gonna share a couple of scriptures that we um, that we feel like 
uh, are just kind of something that we stand on in our marriage. So Matthew 19, 4 through 5, uh, these are Jesus' words. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And so that is one of the huge reasons why we really make point to do most things together, because Mm -hmm. if you are one flesh, then you're basically doing everything together, doing life together. So that is something that is a scripture that we kind of stand on for that. And then, um, and then that is from, so Jesus was quoting from Genesis two 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So Jesus was quoting the and, Old Testament scripture. What, <laughs> no, what does it okay. say inside my way? <laughs> two hearts become one. Yours is too small to actually write on. That's yeah, the... it is too small to write on. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, two yeah. hearts become one. Yeah, and that is funny as from Beauty and the Beast, the Broadway musical, mm-hmm. uh, but we loved it and we felt like it went right along with scripture and what God uh, designed for marriage to be like. So. Um, so we love that. So that is on the inside of my hubby's ring. Um, and then one of the other things at the beginning, from the beginning that we've, uh, really observed is, um, we're going to talk about sex a little and we're not going to get real, (laughs) we're not going to get, we're not going to go too deep or get too explicit, but, um, don't talk about your sex to anyone else. No. Don't, you don't you don't need to spill to your I, friends. I had friends that that uh, always would laugh because I would say I don't mind talking about sex. I just don't want to talk about my sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's good. But I true. mean, it's good. And yeah, you don't uh, you don't bring anyone else into your home, including on a, a videotape, DVD, computer. <laughs> cable, computer. Yeah. Uh, so don't don't bring pornography into your home don't bring another woman into your home don't bring another person uh and don't uh, you know uh sex is between the two of you you don't take that outside of your home Mm -hmm. now if the two of you agree that you need counseling in that area then you can go together to counseling or if you feel like you want to do it separate but you discuss it ahead of time and say hey, I think I need to talk to someone about this. You know, at least the other person knows what's happening. And it's not for the purpose of, you know, just, I don't know, spilling the beans, you know. And and it can be hard because I feel like that's um, the gossipy thing. I think probably in both men and women with, like, friends, you know, it can be easy to, um, you know. Now, I think that people think that, before marriage you need to test drive the car and that's not really true i i think what you need to do is discuss your expectations Mm -hmm. and that's across the board every everything that you have an expectation on but but even in the area of sex Mm -hmm. discuss your expectations and what you think that you're gonna want uh in that area and you should have the full knowledge of what each other is thinking is thinking so that it's not a surprise like yeah. oh he wants sex all the time i don't ever want sex that kind of thing and we we waited to have sex until we got married absolutely so um because that is what god calls for in scripture and not to say that if you uh didn't that you can't pursue a healthy sex life and marriage under how god designed things but that was on our hearts definitely to do and so we did that and we love our sex life Uh and some people might think like kev said well you need to test drive the car you don't need to test drive the car Mm -hmm. you just need to have good open communication so god designed our bodies to do what they need to do for each other and it you know as long as also your souls are the ones that are meant for each other you can make it wonderful Um, the other thing is, uh, well, and this goes along with what you're saying, discussing expectations, don't have unrealistic expectations. And that's really a good thing because sometimes with movies and even, 
if you're just watching a romantic comedy or whatever that um there's kind of that's that's tv that's movie magic like you know you, real life is different than it is in the movies i don't know if you knew that but it is. <laughs> what <laughs> um but so you don't like you know, you have to be realistic about what what you're expecting of each other. Absolutely. And the other thing is uh, don't be offended about what your spouse likes or dislikes. That And that goes into expectations as well. And this should be a conversation that happens continually throughout your marriage. It's not discussed right at the beginning and then it doesn't change. Our bodies grow and change. Absolutely. Our schedules change. Our likes and dislikes change. Hormones as a woman, like if you're a woman, you know, (laughs) your body goes through a lot of weird changes throughout your life, whether different times of the month or whatever. So be in the habit of discussing it. And if you've never discussed it, it could feel awkward, but you need to do it because uh, having a healthy sex life will enrich your marriage. Yeah. Sex is not everything, but... But it will. But if you have a healthy marriage, a healthy sex life can right, come out. And, and and it has to be about communication. And when things change for you, well, that doesn't feel good anymore. Then mm-hmm. you change the way you approach things. Or mm-hmm. yep. I would like to experience such and yep. such. And yep. And so, love is not easily offended. So, right. like I said, don't get offended by it. Just discuss keep, it and be. Keep exploring. Keep being adventurous. But make sure that you're within the mm-hmm. boundaries of that you've set up in your marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah the boundaries God set up and don't not sleep together. Absolutely God set up. But in in your marriage, you talk about, well, this is an area that I don't want to get into. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Likes and dislikes that might change over time. But if you force it, it'll never change. Right. That's true. Very true. And that all comes with good, healthy communication. Yeah. Um, And then uh, sleeping together. So just your regular sleep. I don't mean not. Saying like code word for sex. No. I'm saying sleeping together is really important. You know, we, even when we're sick, we sleep in the same bed. We don't not kiss each other. Um, those are all really good things. And practicing good, healthy um, affection that doesn't lead to sex is also a really mm-hmm. important thing that we've done from the beginning and been intentional about just, you know, the even as kissing, little kissing, hugging, hugging dancing yeah. in the kitchen, dancing in the kitchen. Yeah, we had a dance party this morning. <laughs> in the kitchen. Woo. Um, but I mean, even as much as like holding hands, oh, yeah. touching each other's shoulder when you walk by, these are things or other parts <laughs> or yeah, other parts, especially that's a good one. Um, but uh, but those are all things that we've really try to be intentional about we discussed that we wanted to be intentional about this at the beginning and then we have been intentional about it so um uh let's see and also just remember this what we're saying is not a societal norm no not absolutely yeah um sadly sadly and there's this concept that you know well men want sex all the time and women don't want it Marriage is hard. Oh, ball and chain. Ball and chain. This this idea, and sometimes people that divorce that divorce is completely acceptable. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I just learned that divorce among non Christians and Christians is the same is rate. The same rate, which is really around fifty plus percent. Which is sad because you know those people didn't start. Getting married, like they didn't get married and go, oh, I'm really hoping that, you know, I'm going to get divorced. Right. right. I don't think anybody does. So, but it's, No, but the question is, did they go into it thinking, I'm going to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to make this right. work forever? Right. Exactly. And that's... I think, I think a lot of people just automatically assume that it's, you can always have an out. Right. Marriages cost, or weddings cost $50,000 and divorces cost 500 It should be the other way around. Right. Totally. It should be $500 to get married and 50000 to get divorced. So you'd think second. It would change. Yeah, it would change your, it. yeah. Well, now that actually brings up another good point. Something else that we've done since the beginning. We, um, we vow never to bring up divorce ever in our marriage. We do not use it as a fighting technique. Nope. It is not... It's not a curse word. It's not a curse word. It's not an option. 
um, we do not bring it up and we never have, not one time in our entire marriage, no matter how frustrated we were at each other at different times, whatever, we never brought it up and that was really important. So, I mean, and it's not too late to start that. Even if you have in the past, talk to your spouse about it and say, let's not do that. I don't want to say that, you know, because that is just, it, it just continues to create, if you don't bring that in to your conversation and your verbiage with your spouse, it creates a real safe space because then you're not going into a conversation about something hard, worrying that they're right. going to leave you. Um, you're well, going in going, they're here, they're here for the long haul. And even if I'm being stupid or unreasonable, they're going to hear me out and they're going to have a little grace for me and we're going to work this out. Right. And I think one thing that, that helps with that is what she brought up earlier, Caroline said, don't talk negatively, negatively about your spouse. If you talk negatively about your spouse, about your girlfriend, boyfriend, kids, whatever, to your friends, they're going to have a negative outlook mm -hmm. on that person. Your, even your parents. Your parents will always and should always side with you. But if you only bring up the negative stuff, well, or even at all, you, and we just don't. We, we don't mm -hmm. vent to people yep. about each other. Yep. If we have an issue... It's right here. Yep. And we work it out. Yep. Uh, but if you bring it up to your friends who maybe your friend is totally not opposed to divorce, then they're going to work that in into your head to make you think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next time you have a fight with your spouse, all of a sudden the word comes up, well, let's just get divorced. Mm -hmm. And and it, that's just not okay. It's mm -hmm. not healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very destructive. And that goes into the not bringing anyone into your, nobody, your sex, your, all of that stuff. Now, and again, even with issues and stuff within your marriage, communication issues, if you feel you need counseling, that's okay. Counseling is by all means a great, awesome thing to get if you need it, because sometimes it's nice to have a mediator who is neutral um, who can hear both of you and kind of give you a little well, and, insight. Well, and even mentors. I mean, you could have people that the two of you aspire to be. Maybe a slightly, right. not necessarily older, but maybe they've been married longer, or maybe their marriage is just really, really great. And as long as it's with the two of you that goes to your mentors and say, hey, what do you guys do when, when this, this becomes a problem, when this happens? Yeah. And and uh, and you use it as a learning mm -hmm. tool, whether or a teaching tool. So uh, uh, things that we're bringing up in this conversation, like getting hangry and having our mm -hmm. first fight at, on our honeymoon, uh, we're not using it to battle each other or to bring up past hurts. It's to teach. Mm -hmm. Yep, and talk about why we feel like we've had. Um, you know, a really blessed marriage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of other scriptures here that we love in marriage. Uh, Proverbs 5, 18 through 19. Can you see that, baby? Yes. You want to read it? Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. <laughs> <laughs> As a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. And Ooh. I am. <laughs> Hmm. First mm. Corinthians seven five, do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self control. So, not having sex right. is a you is a sign. If you haven't, if you can't remember the last time you've had sex, then there might you. There's probably something you need to right. address. Don't use sex as a fighting tool it's against one each other. Obviously, you're not going to be in the mood in the middle of a fight, but you need to not let the sun go down on your anger. Mm -hmm. Resolve your issue or resolve to resolve it the next day when you're cool and Which collected. Which is okay, too. But don't... I, I'm not going to have sex unless he starts picking up his socks or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's 
that's just not. Or, oh, look, he bought me flowers or he bought me this that I wanted. Okay, I'll give him sex. Right. You know, that's, it's, that's it's not, not what a, it's. it's not, you're not a prostitute. It's not a bartering tool. Yep, Is exactly. That? Yeah, it's something God created for marriage. And it is, that is the thing that bonds your souls together. And when you do it, it is your biggest weapon against the enemy coming into your marriage. So when you have it on the regular, and obviously seasons change, and but that's why you have to just keep talking about it and make sure you're just both being uh, taken care of. So mm-hmm. just make sure you keep this conversation open. Now, I say it's not a barring tool, but hey, a little romance here and there doesn't hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you do that also because you love each other and out of the kindness of your, you know. And that also... Well, um, and it shouldn't be something that you're trying to do to get sex. It should be something that you do because of the love that you have for your spouse. Mm-hmm. Often, w- so women can open up physically uh, when um, when they feel fed emotionally. And men can open up emotionally when they feel fed physically. I feel like it. <laughs> but that's kind of like a beautiful thing that yeah. how God has it work that way all right uh, let's move into talking about working together okay so we met in an acrobatic troupe mm-hmm. um, and uh, I walked in he was holding uh, our friend Brian in a high handstand over his head and his back was to me and I thought he had a cute butt and <laughs> and not Brian Kevin <laughs> <laughs> Brian's got a Sorry, Brian. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and then I walked into rehearsal. Brian came down. Kevin turned around and he said, "Hi, I'm Kevin." And he gave me a hug, and I was like, "Okay, this right. is but like." See, that's why I put Brian in a high handstand because I saw Caroline from a distance. <laughs> I said, "Brian, jump into a handstand real quick." <laughs> I love it. (laughs) It's awesome. But I still have that like visual in my head of seeing him and hugging him for the first time. And, but, uh, but so we've always worked together though. So we met working together in an acrobatic troupe and we continued to work together. We did have some shows and things that, you know, he, obviously when I was doing construction, she wasn't doing construction. Right. Or like when California Adventure opened, you were in a stunt show at California Mm -hmm. Adventure and I was in In doing acrobatics in the parade. So, um, well, when we did film and television, she was on the, the in the costume department, and I was in the set deck department, and we didn't even have the same hours half the mm-hmm. time, and, and yeah. that was a little hard. But that was hard. but we don't have a problem working together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that also goes along with other things like uh, matching. Uh, <laughs> we we always ma- well, like we almost always match. We almost always match. Yeah. Uh, and and I think that it's hard because it goes back to the societal norms where people don't they think that they're not supposed to like working with their spouse. Mm-hmm. They think that they're not supposed to match because that's too cutesy. And I, I, I don't understand what's wrong with <laughs> either of those things because if you can work together professionally, then you pretty much are guaranteed to be able to work together at home. Yeah. And if you can't match the two of those up, you're going to have conflict at some some yeah. point. Um, I'm not saying that you have to go get jobs together. I'm just mm-hmm. saying like it, it, it can we, work. We always we, we don't always use the dishwasher. We sometimes stand at the sink and we do dishes together. One person washes, mm-hmm. one person dries. And and if you if you're already able to make that work, then it shouldn't mm-hmm. really be a problem. Well, working. and there there are definitely some things like so one of the uh, good thing that we've experienced uh, that we'll tell you don't do is don't believe an outside source over your spouse, especially if you're working together. We had a situation, and of course it's the enemy trying to divide our marriage. We were working on a film, and we had someone tell Kevin that I had acted or had done something in a certain way, and he was kind of, he was surprised, but kind of came and talked to me about it, and I don't know that he totally believed it, but he kind of came to me and was like, why did you say this? And I was like, I didn't, I didn't say that. We didn't, that didn't happen. And, and it kind of, we had this, you know, a little bit of a discussion we had to have 
Um, and we realized that, like, especially, I mean, that happens anyway. You should, you know, not believe an outside source over your spouse. Absolutely. But when you're working, it's especially good because often if you're working together, you might have the same boss, the same client, the same whatever. And it's really good to make sure you don't allow anybody that you're working with to come between what you have together. Right. So um, that is like a... We've tried that. Don't, don't. Um... Right. So uh, you should always have each other's back. Yes. Um, that, and that being said, too, you do have to be willing to take criticism. So yes. we actually had to counsel another couple because uh, one, uh, one party was working on a show the end client wasn't happy with that person. Mm-hmm. We kind of had to go to the couple together to go, hey, look, this is this is what happened at this event. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so it's, it's, and then they, they had to be able to take the criticism. And I think they did a pretty good mm-hmm. job at the time. So, uh, but you have to, so if you, if you have somebody come to you, uh, your spouse, not, not cutting it, you have to go to your spouse and not com- be combative and go, mm-hmm. I can't believe you did this wrong. You need to go, hey, uh, this is what I understand. Is this a problem? How do we fix this? Or is it not a problem? Is it the mm-hmm. other the other person who brought it to my right. attention? And on the flip side, we had another instance um, the other way where we were... Um, we were working on uh, on something, and I got a text saying that Kevin had volunteered me for something, <laughs> and, and said, "Oh, Kevin said you would do this," and I was busy. I was actually like, I was working on um, I was working on something pretty important, and um, and I thought at first I thought what. He knows I'm working on this important thing. And for a minute, I let myself get a little frustrated. And then I thought, hey, I'm going to just check with him. And so I texted him and I said, because I knew he was working too. So I texted him and we weren't in the same location at the time, but we were working in the same like project space. And uh, and I said, hey, uh, are you volunteering me for stuff? And he said, negative. So, so Caroline was volunteered for it, just not by me. The mm-hmm. only question that was asked of me is whether or not she was in town. Yeah, yeah. And my answer, yes, was not to volunteering her. <laughs> it was yes. just that she was in town. Yeah, said, oh. and so, but if I, it was very obviously the enemy trying to right. get me us. and him to have this yeah. riff. And had I, <clears throat> had Give, I given just in. said, given in and been all pissed off and been like, and, and I actually almost would have just left what I was doing to do it because I thought, oh, well, I guess he, you know, volunteered me, whatever. Then I would have been, um, you know, disgruntled. Anyway, it's, especially when you're working together, I think it's imp- really important to just check with each other. Don't be offended. Be open for criticism, but just... You know, remember the the enemy is real. He's going to try and divide your marriage. Um, another thing that I would say uh, with working together. So we would tour um, with ac- different acrobatic companies all over the world and all over uh, the United States, and um, and we'd be doing different jobs. So sometimes, so Kevin would be building sets and uh, maybe and he's in the show and he's driving a truck and I'm doing costumes and merchandise. And so we're working in the same show. And keeping me awake when I'm driving the truck. <laughs> yeah. After having done the, every, all the other jobs. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, but within our workspaces, we both had to have respect for each other's job. So sometimes, so like within your home, when you're together and having conversations about things and how your home runs, um, it's a little easier because you've kind of gotten a groove and this is what you're doing and you have to kind of take that mindset out on the road and have respect for your spouse or out in the workplace. So sometimes he'd need to finish something on, you know, finish building a set. It would be really late at night. I would be starting to get tired and frustrated and I'm thinking in my head, well, I know how you can do your job better. You can just We'll get some good sleep and you can come in early, you know, and I can have some ideas about how he could do his job better 
And there were times I asserted those things and it didn't but, work out so but well. Knowing that I had something to finish in a with a deadline, I would not have been able to get to sleep without having finished it prior. Right. And so learning to have that respect for each other that hey, like we're we're working together, we're doing two different jobs, and I'm gonna give you respect in your workplace of the job that you're doing and no, that's that's not my job. I wasn't called to do that job. They didn't ask me to do that job. I don't really know how to build the set or to rig or to do those things. So I'm not, I, I need to let you do your job. And, and likewise, you know, there were times we'd... She'd be doing inventory and ca- after tally, merchandise. Tallying, tallying. And I'm like, can't you do this on, Tomorrow the road, or... on the road while I'm driving? You could be tallying. Yeah. And it made more sense in her head to be able to look at the stuff and do it. Right in, then. Right then and after, there. After so the show, basically yeah. basically the same kind of thing. It is the same kind of thing. And especially, it was especially tough when uh, we spent a month in New York City working off Broadway at Christmas time. And it was amazing and epic and lovely. But uh, that was what was hard is we'd finish the show and, you know, New York is the city that never sleeps. Um, <laughs> thank you, Frank Sinatra. And, um, and uh, so... You know, we'd finish, and even if the show was done late and I was done counting late, there was usually somewhere fun we could go or There's somewhere walking to get around. pizza in New York at yeah, all hours. At all hours. <laughs> and so, you know, and while we were there, we really wanted to live it up. But I knew I needed to get my job done, and I could see, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's not like it's it's easy to, you have to be intentional about giving your spouse that respect in their workplace. Yes. So I would say that is like a huge thing we've learned over the Which years. Which goes back to the being hangry and tired and <laughs> trying not to let yeah. that affect your communication. Yep. And not to get offended by those things because yeah. it's so easy to do um, when you're working and and then, you know, especially when you're working together and you spend all your time together, you know, I can sometimes think like, well, I see how you can do this better and you should listen to my way because it's better. And um, I don't know, probably no one else. I'm so. sure. It's only I'm a... probably the only one. So, um, but, and that's, but it was a good reminder. And mind you, it, it, it that didn't happen overnight. That was, we've kind of learned the beauty of that over years of doing that type mm-hmm. of work. And I'm so grateful we had that. Okay, I want to move on to family because <laughs> that is another aspect of right. being married that uh, even though when you get married, you create your own family and this this family is as, number one. As she mentioned in scripture before, a man leaves his mother and father. Mm-hmm. And cleaves to yes, his wife. You, uh, you, you, you leave your family. Now, mm-hmm. you generally, most couples stay near one set of parents or, or the other if, uh, if you're both grew up in the same town, maybe you're both there, which in my opinion might lead to problems because of holidays and things like that. So uh, that just takes a lot of compromise yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, luckily, I mean, we haven't really had that problem. Uh, but my... it's also putting your marriage first and your family first. Right. So like, you know, you don't want to get uh, caught up in people pleasing. Yeah. And once you create your own family, you have to really decide what's best for your family. And even if that's telling your parents or your siblings or whatever, hey, you know, we can't do Christmas Day, but we're going to do, um, but let's do the Saturday after and then we can all get together. Yeah. And then, you know, for whatever reason. So, uh, but, and that change, that will change. I, I would suggest not getting into the idea that there's a tradition that we always do it on this day like this every year right especially when you first get married being like kind of a little open to kind of growing and changing with how your family grows and changes is important because that could cause a lot of fights if you're like no we always my family always does christmas eve and you could feel like oh my gosh we're like i'm married and now my whole life is falling (laughs) apart because i can't do christmas eve with my family and you know and that's not like that that's really a um you don't want to come at it from that place so i would suggest if you're young in your marriage or if you're having issues with this sort of a thing to kind of reconsider uh tradition and what tradition means you can still have tradition but 
be open for change in um, in calendar and scheduling. Well, and it, and it could go beyond beyond the, the the communication at that point needs to go beyond just the two of you. If mm-hmm. you can work it out and and do the compromise between the two of you, that's fine. Luckily. You were the oldest of mm-hmm. your siblings and the first to get married. I was, yeah. the, I was the youngest between my brother really... and I, but the first to get married. And I told my parents, I'm not doing the two-holiday thing. You're invited to come over. So we would all, including my brother, get together at, at your family's house. Mm-hmm. And it was just one big happy shindig. And, and it, it was great while it lasted. Uh, that being said... Your other siblings are pretty much almost all married now. My brother's married. They all have, they're they they're having kids. Now it's kind of getting separated. But it now, was so easy but, when we got there. It, it was, but now <laughs> it doesn't fall on us yeah. to keep it all together and right. to keep that tradition going because everybody else has their own opinion in their head of how that's going right. to go and which which family gets precedence on which year for which and holiday. We try to, and we've tried to encourage my siblings in that way mm-hmm. too, that it's your their family, family yes. comes first. And yeah. so now that you're married and you have kids or you're an adult and you're doing your thing, you, you can't, we're not going to force you. We want to enjoy time with you. We want to celebrate mm-hmm. Christmas. We want to celebrate Thanksgiving. We want to celebrate these holidays that are beautiful and fun, but It might look different every year, Mm -hmm. and that's an okay thing. Um, The other thing is make sure you don't put your family's needs above the needs of your spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, You, it is very easy thing to do, very very easy. Um, Especially, I think, like for the woman, I feel like that happens a lot. Where it's like, um, you know, well, my mom needs me, or this, or that, and. It's okay. Obviously, scripture talks about honoring your parents and loving your parents and your family. and But you just have to make sure that that isn't superseding your spouse's needs. Right. And that, you know... Your your, marital vows, your commitment. Yeah. You know, other. if your husband's been gone all day at work and he comes home, and the minute he comes home, your mom calls and you get on the phone for three hours with your mom... That's not putting your spouse first. You could have talked to your mom while he was at work. I mean, that's, you know, that that kind of thing is really important to just make sure. And obviously there are times where it's an emergency or there's a special circumstance or someone needs a little extra care. But on the regular, you really should make sure your spouse is first. Um, and I have a like a slightly funny story uh, about that. Like when I was first learning this, um, it was within our first five years of marriage, I think, because um, we were living up in the mountains. As he said, my siblings were all still little, living at home. And we went and we lived in the mountains uh, down the street from them. And uh, we decided to go down the hill and get Del Taco for dinner. And, um, and so we all went down the hill together. We, you know, put in the order, you know, we put in our order and it's a lot of people. I have three siblings and my parents and me and Kev. So a lot of stuff and we're driving up the hill and I was, and we, I don't know why we didn't check the bags before we left Del Taco, but, um, but we were almost up at the house and I was checking stuff and, um, and there was, chili cheese fries my sister my little sister Tori had ordered chili cheese fries and Kevin had ordered chili cheese fries and there was only one chili cheese fry in the bag and Tori goes there's only one where's my chili cheese fry and I said oh it's okay Kevin will share his with you and I immediately volunteered him now Kevin loves Tori and his heart he would have totally shared his chili cheese fries with Tori but my immediate uh, to take care of my sister over my husband to take my husband's food, so to speak. I think I'm a I, lot bigger than her sister. I think I actually just said, oh, you can have Kevin's. I think that's I, actually I think, what I said. I think that was what it was. And I gave his food away. I was like, oh, no, it's okay. You can have Kevin's, but she's just little, you know? And that was my thought. And the Lord really convicted me. It's like this moment. Like I can like re- replay it in my head over and over again and feel that like the Lord like going, Caroline, what did you just do? So that is a silly explanation of it. But that just kind of shows where like you could be, you know, not thinking harm to your spouse, but without realizing it, be putting the needs of your family, your outer family, not your 
like your immediate, your, family, your yeah. immediate family, um, above your spouse. And that, uh, can cause problems. Um, I, another thing that I was thinking about was do speak kind things about your in-laws. Yes. Like, here's the thing. We both can com- have complaints mm-hmm. about our own parents. And so sometimes you vent to your spouse if you're frustrated at a parent or whatever. But it gets a little sticky when... When you repeat those When things. you repeat those <laughs> things back to your spouse. Because then often they can get offended. Right. And like, you just said that, you know? And you're yeah, like, but only I, I know, know but only that. I want to say that about, you know, <laughs> my family. And so you have to really be careful about that. And I think the best way, I mean, really the best thing is to not really speak negative about anyone. But I think really being intentional about speaking good things about your in-laws. Because, you know, what is it? In Pollyanna, she has a little locket um, that is Abraham Lincoln quote that says, uh, if you look for the bad in people, you're sure to find it. Absolutely, yeah. And so, um, so I think there's bad in all of us. And so I think focusing on and calling out good things about your in-laws is a really good practice, especially, um, and especially if you are first married, even if you aren't first married, even if you're like, you know, been married for a lot of years, start doing it. Cause that's a sweet thing. And that, um, that, inc- that is sweet for your spouse and it's sweet for your in-laws and it will start changing your perspective of your in-laws too. If you are, if you're constantly focused on things that maybe bug you about them, right. um, then you might, then you're just going to continue to get more bugged by it. Whereas if you focus on the good, then adversely though, Pollyanna ism <laughs> positivity is always, almost always a good thing sometimes your spouse needs you to be sympathetic yeah and that's you, a good you point. don't have to be on their side but sometimes if they're venting the minute that you try to be overly positive almost negates their feeling <laughs> he's saying this because i do this because <laughs> i'm like a uber positive person and i and i have a tendency to the minute I hear someone saying something negative, I want to combat it with something positive. Right. But the Bible even talks about like weeping with those who weep, and mourning with those mm-hmm. who mourn, and don't like, don't run into your neighbor's, what is it? Don't run into your neighbor's house in the morning with a loud voice. I don't know. That kind of feels <laughs> like that. Like be sympathetic to yeah. your to your spouse, and without, and you know, within reason. If you find that okay. They've been complaining about this. This I feel like this happened this last week that I was, there was something that happened. I can't even remember what it was, but I was frustrated by something. It wasn't even with our family, I don't think. But I kept talking about it and kept talking about it and kept talking about it. And you listened for like a good day. And then the next day happened and I was still on it and I couldn't get over it. Right. And you said, hey babe, I don't know, maybe we're done talking about that. And I was like, Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's good. You're right. Well, and that was something that I had to even learn myself because guys generally want to fix things. Uh, And girls more often want the guy to just listen. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there, there does have to come that point when as, as the spouse uh, on either side, that is like you have to show sympathy, you have to listen, but you also have to know when a subject then needs the positive positive mm-hmm. side to come out or or a boundary to be yes. laid down. Because if you just mull over negativity in your mind all the time, that is just gonna be an in, mm-hmm. a foothold for Satan. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. So uh there's that, and I think when that's my maybe where another one of those things where like a oh, marriage is hard. Well, it's it's moderating your communication, mm-hmm. modifying it for a time. You still need to be able to say the things that you want to say. You just have to know the most appropriate time in which to say yes. and do them. You know exactly. That's so and, good. And counsel. Mm-hmm. That is so good. I love it. 
The next thing that I would say, let's talk about no secrets. No secret friends, no secret purchases, no secret passwords, yeah. no secret emails, yeah. no secret life, yeah. anything. Complete transparency. The minute uh, you allow what, that you have something like that, uh, uh, you're allowing, again, you're allowing a foothold for mm-hmm. Satan to get in. Whether, now, whether it's into your marriage or into someone else's. Right. If you are that secret person for someone else. Mm -hmm. And really having is a a dangerous thing to have friends of the opposite sex that you spend time with without your spouse. Or without their spouse. Or Or without their spouse. That is danger, danger. Even if your intention is to not cheat on your spouse, cheating doesn't have to be sex. You, You could have had friends for years and years, but if they don't also then become your spouse's friend, Mm -hmm. that's That's a problem. Uh, In fact, a lot of my friends that I had, uh, uh, female friends that I had at a much younger age, now, if they want to talk to me, they are talking to us, and they usually communicate to Caroline. Yeah. There were several, uh, there were almost everybody responded like that when I started dating Kevin, actually, and then when we got serious, really, and then, um, and then since then, and there was a handful of people who kind of didn't, but those people kind of go by the wayside. Yeah. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hang out with both of us, sorry. Yeah. And because you don't want to be, if you are see- seeking something out in someone else and that you're not getting in your spouse, then that, that's, that's cheating, an affair. It's cheating. Yeah. yeah. Um, affair of the heart and often affairs of the heart lead to you not being able to control yeah. a now, physical affair. Now, if there's something affair. you're not getting from your spouse, you need to communicate that to them. Mm-hmm. And if they're not getting it at that point, you, the two of you together need to seek a mentor or a counselor. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we would again, definitely but... do not hang out, hang out with someone of the opposite sex without your... Don't be friends. Don't be on Facebook chatting all day long with someone who is either married, opposite sex. You know, don't, don't do that. Um, and that's something that we've held to since the beginning as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and one thing that I would say, the only time that there could be some sort of secret password. So some people do struggle with pornography, um, men and women both don't, doesn't mean it's not just men. Um, and there are some great, um, things out there that are safeguards against that. Um, even if it's not full on pornography, it's really good to be very transparent about computer and whatever stuff within Mm -hmm. your marriage. Because honestly, if you've been on the internet, you know, it's, it is, it can creep in very easily. Something that's very tempting. Whoever has the problem should allow the spouse to create either parental controls or Mm -hmm. password controls. There's a Christian software uh, that you can download on your computer that uh, that keeps that kind of stuff off of there on even on like Netflix and all of these things have actual things because for kids, you know, you can keep out those things so that nothing bad comes on for your kids when you're not paying attention. Um, and there's no shame in doing that and safeguarding your marriage, especially if uh, either of you has a, um, has an issue with it. And uh, just be careful, that can really creep in, even in mainstream uh, lately with a lot of, um, there's a lot of TV shows that, and I'm not going to get judging, I'm not going to mention any names of TV shows, but we are very careful not to allow certain things into our home because we feel like it is, um, that's bringing something else into our marriage. Yeah. Yeah. But even, I mean, literally some very mainstream TV shows are pretty much pornography. Yeah. Um, and soft core at yep. the very least. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, that is it there. It just creates a whole nest of problems. So I would definitely just keep in prayer, keep in conversation between you and your spouse and, uh, just protect your home from things like that because, um, that is, it's important, mm-hmm. um, to the honor of your marriage. Um, and that was like one of the other things that we do is, um, we have the find my iPhone on our 
on our phones. And it's funny because it's it's great. We love it. Like I love being yeah. able to see where Kev is if we're apart. And it's not because I'm worried that he's somewhere, whatever. Usually it's because I'm like, did when he make it to the home? hardware oh. store? Is he dead? Is he on the road dead? Anyway, so that's usually why I like it. And some people are like, that's creepy that you guys do that. And it's like, well, we don't Actually, think no. so. The other, we the like other day it. day I was, I was building something and wanted to surprise you with it. So mm-hmm. I was keep, keeping tabs on where you were at to know how much time I had left to complete mm-hmm. my project. So. Huh. Yeah, it's very sweet. Um, another thing that happens um, in marriages that is like a tricky situation is money. Um, it's a reason people ha- think marriage is hard because there's dis- you know disagreements about money. Um, we always, always haven't been great about our communication with money. We, we start, I started off thinking, oh, the man does the money. And I just thought, well, I'm just not going to pay attention to it. And we eventually melded and, our bank and, accounts and, together. Until we got married, my mom did my taxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> But, uh, but eventually we found out, and it's funny because my mom did our bills, so I don't know why I thought, like, the man does it. Maybe I just, like, wanted to shirk my responsibilities. Um, but uh, No, it was <laughs> oddly, for who knows what reason, was not one of those things that we really discussed. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. We didn't discuss it. And, yeah. But eventually we did. We slowly did. And, um, and that wasn't, that was something kind of over years that we figured out. And one day we figured out that I didn't mind paying the bills and taking care of that stuff and taxes and whatever. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's great. (laughs) If you don't mind, that's awesome. And so now like we, so it's funny because a lot of women do the like, oh, I hid, you know, this Amazon purchase from my husband. It's coming, which we don't, that's not a good thing. Don't hide purchases from each other. Yeah, that's one of those things Um, you talk about. But uh, that's, it's funny because for me, people, you know, I I was out uh, with a friend when we were out house sitting in Florida and um, I, we went to a couple of stores and I needed to get some things. And she goes, Kevin's going to never want you to shop with me again. And, and I laughed and I said, actually, I do our money. So he would totally trust me um, to make the decision on what I was wife. purchasing. So yeah. thank you, baby. Absolutely. Um, so it was funny though, because it's like, and it, it was funny what she said, because that is actually like, you know, a lot. There's, I don't know, I think women have more of a problem with that, like, spending thing or something. I don't know. But because I do our money, I'm actually, like, the more tight well, I think, one. Well, I think what happens societally when men are in charge of the money, they may give their wife an allowance or say, you can go buy this thing. Um, yeah. But I think, I think it also comes down, there has to be a level of trust. There has, mm-hmm. to, be, has to be communication about... Okay, well, this is our current budget, or this is what our our finances look like. We need to be tight for a little while, or or mm-hmm. you can go get yourself a whole new wardrobe. Or it, the communication needs to be open. But but on the person who has that challenge, it, it, it's it's kind of like what we talked about with sin. If if you're the one who is doing things that you shouldn't, that you know you probably shouldn't be doing, well, whether it's looking at, at pornography or talking to someone in secret online, or making pur- purchases on QVC all the time. <laughs> QVC, or <laughs> just like hiding them. Or, like... or whatever, like things like that. I mean, you have to figure out a way to have some kind of accountability, whether yeah. it's through another family member, a friend, but, but you need to figure out the mm-hmm. best way to, like, to, to minimize that kind of purchasing, especially if you are the one in charge of the money. Now, Caroline mm-hmm. doesn't have a spending problem. So mm-hmm. the fact that you've always been in charge of our money, and I'm not really much of a spender, but if I know that I need I need a new power tool, I'll just ask you, oh, is it in the budget to get this right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, honestly, the, the thing about it is, is that the, this is just where the devil can get a foothold, is if you don't discuss these things. Mm-hmm. And so the whole, like our whole marriage, we just have been, we've always tried to just be aware and these are just, you know, things that we've learned. And Proverbs is uh, full, 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 full of wisdom about money. Literally, like, so I went through Proverbs. Well, hold on. Before before you get into the, the, the wisdom, so we're not 
wealthy. We're not financially well off. We are definitely not in debt, and that is a good thing. We have things that we spend money on that might seem trivial. We enjoy doing them, and we know that we have to keep it to a minimum minimum mm-hmm. because even buying a beer out can cost nine bucks for the beer plus tip and or, or mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And 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 you do a few of those in a sitting, yeah. and suddenly yeah. you have a huge tab yeah. at the yeah. end of the night. So. Uh, and that's one thing that, that we have to moderate and, and we'd probably have a lot more money if we did a lot less of that kind of thing. But we've always felt, beer, but we've always felt like investing in memories together yes. was more important than, uh, than building wealth per se. We think it's important to be wise about money, but we also think it's really important to prioritize our memories and time spent together and that goes for even memories with friends and family and those kinds of things we always want to be participating in community of believers and our community of friends who even aren't believers and loving on people and that is important to us so and that is something that we realized was important but yeah like he said we do we're careful about it Um, if you go through, so I went through Proverbs and I took a green highlighter and I highlighted in my Bible, all of the wisdom about money, um, which is kind of cool because then if I'm like feeling a little uneasy about something money wise or praying for some wisdom from the Lord in terms of money, I can like flip to my Proverbs and just, and I can like immediately spot the spots where money is uh, talked about and wisdom and money. So that has been really helpful for me. So the other, so investing in each other uh, and being intentional, and we've already kind of gone over all of this, but um, don't be easily offended. Um, Having grace for each other. Uh, Oh, this is a good one too. Uh, Don't talk, stop, don't say that 10 times fast. Don't stop talking and dreaming. So we have a dream book that we created within the first couple of years of our marriage that we would just clip out little things uh, from magazines. And for those of you who are young, they were it was the paperback version of Pinterest. It was the Pinterest that came to your house. I know you probably you all probably know what a magazine is, but that was it. Like that's all we had at that time. Um, to like dream and look at stuff, you know, interior design. If we were at a hardware store, we'd pull paint swatches and go, ooh, this is pretty color. That would be so fun one day to paint something like this. And Even even wandering around uh, different cities, including going to Disneyland and going to Main Street USA, Mm -hmm. and looking at how Disney put together colors, Mm -hmm. it it actually formed a lot of our, our current living space and yeah, colors. Yeah, our and, color and... palette for different rooms in our house um, are actually based off of different buildings and areas in the Disney parks because it's some of our favorite places mm-hmm. to be. So, um, so, but don't stop dreaming. Don't let life, don't let life or even just the little stressors of paying bills and doing different things like that, um, health stuff, whatever. Don't let that stop you from dreaming about what could be or what might happen or hey, what if we did this? Even if it's have a dream vacation book and and don't discount it. Don't say, oh, well, we're never going to get to Hawaii. You know, we've always yeah. wanted to go or we're yeah. never going to get to Europe. And Trip I know- of a lifetime. Yeah, and we don't like <laughs> that word either because- You got a long life. There's a lot of trips yes, to be had. Yes, And if you actually look at times of year where those trips are less, like you could manage multiples. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, and I would just say, too, is like to, um, you know, just be positive about your marriage. Speak life into your marriage, no matter what it is, Mm -hmm. whether it's talking about trips you're going to take, talking about your home, talking about your family, talking about things and ideas that you have and and about your marriage. When you speak about your spouse, be intentional about saying good things about them and say good things to yourself about them. If you find yourself getting frustrated, like, oh, I left a socks on the ground again, Re- replace it with something. Go, oh, but, oh my gosh, he rubbed my feet last night. That was so awesome that he rubbed my feet. And try to, you know, 
combat the negative yes. thoughts because there will be negative thoughts and don't yeah. beat yourself up over it. We're human. No. And you, you get frustrated. And you're it's, married it's... to a sinful person. We are both sinful people and we both are selfish at times. Mm-hmm. And when we are, that's not so great for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just say like in general, being positive, you know, don't let get your into marriage that. win. Don't let Satan win. Yes. And be realistic about your life season that you're in. I mean, don't, you know, don't put pressure on your spouse or your marriage in a season that um, is difficult or different. Like, um, you know, there's been seasons like I've had surgeries and I've had to heal up over the course of really a couple of months before I was really, you know, (laughs) before I was really back in the mix of things. And I remember we did a vacation to... uh, because I couldn't really walk very fast or far. I had had surgery, I think it was like two months before, um, for a burst, my right ovary burst open with a cyst the size of a grapefruit. And I can link that in the show notes too. I have a blog post about that. Um, while we were traveling, while we were in New York, uh, which was, or New Jersey, Anyway, so scary. Yeah, it was really scary. Yeah. But when I was healing, now my birthday was coming up and we often do some we always do something for my birthday. And um but I was not there I wasn't going to go walk around no. Europe for she, 10 She miles said a day. I want to go sit by a pool somewhere. Yeah, because really I was sleeping a lot of hours a day. My body was still healing up. I had a lot of other things that went into it. And, um, and so we went on a little carnival cruise. Three carnival cruise. Yeah. And it was lovely. But so we were realistic about our life situation. We didn't force a European trip where I... Backpacking around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up the Alps, <laughs> you know, like be realistic about your season and be joyful about that. Don't be sad that, oh man... Well, we have kids, and so we have to do this kind of a vacation. Just be joyful about it and be positive about it. So that is, um, you know, definitely something that I would say. Um, the, uh, the scripture, here's a scripture I want to share. Um, be vigilant. It's the little things that can come in and start divisions. There's a scripture, Song of Songs 215, Catch Us the Foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Mm-hmm. And that's true. It's the little things that come in and steal and, joy. Yeah, and steal the joy. And our marriages are special. They're important. Treat it, it's a covenant with God. Be treat it like the honor that it deserves and make sure that those little foxes don't get in there. I love this. Uh the passion translation says. You must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship, for they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted with you. Will you catch them and remove them for me? We will do it together. We will do it together. We'll do it together. (laughs) Um, And nobody will put as much importance in your marriage as the two of you. So don't expect people to honor or respect your marriage. You have to set that precedence and those boundaries. Um, because nobody else will do that. So do you have any other things that you want to add? Um, I just, I'm just blessed that I have a wife full of grace, (laughs) full, full of grace. Taught me a lot about it. Uh, uh, of the two of us, I'm, I'm still the one that struggles and I'm still the one that, (laughs) I allow the little foxes in and they get, you know, they cause problems. Uh, obviously not major problems, but, um, so have grace for your wife, have grace for each other and, uh, uh, realize when you're going through hunger, depression, sleeplessness and fix those things and, and keep, your marriage positive. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else to add? I, um, I was going to say, because you're like, <laughs> I'm the only one that has problems. No, I have problems too. I know. I, I would more. say, okay. I would say though, that for me, I have been blessed because of your servant heart. Kev serves me day in, day out. And he makes me feel beautiful and loved every day. 
And that is you are. something. Thank you. Even when I was like crazy disfigured from my surgeries and I felt so like horrible, he just looked at me like I was the most beautiful thing in the world. And that was so encouraging to me. That was so helpful to me. So I loved that. And I've loved, I've loved all 19 years. And I love that we look at our marriage positive. And, um, you know, and I don't want to tear people down who have bought into this marriage is hard concept. But I do just want to encourage you to not fall into this societal norm of thinking you have to have like a good, like any good marriage has really hard difficulty or you have to go through almost getting divorced for the marriage to really be good because that's not true and everyone's marriage is different and you need to not I mean you can look at other marriages that you see thriving and say oh wow okay what are they doing and what could we do to enrich our own marriage but everyone's life situation is different so you really have to um, just make sure you are in step with the Lord, in step right. with what his word says about marriage. You, you shouldn't hit bottom in your marriage to try and make it better. And you shouldn't hit bottom in life to seek God. Yes. If you're, if you're seek him seek, now, you seek him now. And if you're, uh, if you're following, if, if you have God as the center of your marriage mm-hmm. and God as the center of your life and you're actively seeking wisdom and knowledge from the Bible uh, a lot of the a lot of the little things will melt away, and uh, it, don't get me wrong, you will have spiritual warfare because mm-hmm. the the more you try to go after God, the more Satan tries to go after you. Mm-hmm. But with a firm foothold in the kingdom, you have a much better fighting chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, we are huge advocates uh, of of. Uh, being, marriage. Yeah, of mm-hmm. marriage and just really having God be the center of of your marriage is really helpful because the Holy Spirit comes in and softens hearts when mm-hmm. they need softening. And when you're walking with God and he's influencing your decisions and your uh, tendencies, that is extremely helpful to your marriage for sure. So. The only thing we didn't talk about was... Our story. I didn't know if oh, that part, yeah, but... let's do it. Okay. Let's close with that. I love it. So one thing we didn't bring up is that we're 10 years apart. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was nine years old, all the other boys had girlfriends. And I said to my dad, all the other boys have girlfriends. And my dad says, well, your future wife probably isn't born yet. Now, it was easy for him to say. My parents are 12 years apart. So when I was 19... Caroline was nine years old. I was engaged to be married. And I was nine and my mom, I went to my mom one day. I got this feeling and I can remember immediately feeling almost panicked. And I went to my mom and I said, Mom, the man I'm supposed to marry is going to marry someone else. And And he doesn't know. She didn't know me. I didn't know him. I hadn't met him yet. (laughs) And he doesn't know he's supposed to marry me because I'm nine. And I said, Mom, we have to pray every day he doesn't marry her. And I wrote it in my little journal. And, um, and I prayed and every day I went to my mom for six months saying, okay, mom, let's pray. He doesn't marry her. Okay, mom, let's pray. He doesn't marry her. And I, and so I did that. So she fast caused forward. caused me a lot of heartbreak. <laughs> I did. Yeah. My, my fiance <laughs> left in, in a, in a major fashion. So yeah. yeah. And he was very depressed and very overwhelmed and, um, fast forward. Okay. And so now- we met when she was 16 and I was 26. And that then, may sound crazy, but I was not your average 16 year old. She was not. I she was, was already graduating high school. She was working professionally as an acrobat. And yeah. that's what we said, met at an acrobatic troupe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so meeting and, and then discussing that this thing happened at the same time and that, that I was praying for him, we found out that it was the exact same time that I was praying for him to not marry her and the Lord put it on my heart so early. So it's so cool because we just like, we have this, uh, this story that it, like, even though we didn't know each other when we were kids or when I was a kid and (laughs) he was already an adult, (laughs) um, that, uh, God was already placing things in place for us to meet and for us to have that time together and to 
come together the way right. he designed. So it's just now. Kind don't of get cool. me wrong. Even though I hugged her the first time I saw her, I did not pursue her until her mom started inviting me out to family events and mm -hmm. church and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and he started going to church with us and hanging out with us, and he was and I was falling hopelessly in love with him because he was coming and spending time with us and I thought gosh he's never gonna like me because I'm too young and he was thinking and, and, right. she's oh, never right. gonna she's, like me she's too young I, <laughs> she's, I'm too old she's never gonna like me and I just found myself we were at a um at a holiday party uh and for the acrobatic troupe and I just kept finding myself like this close to him and I was like oh my gosh my I doing he's gonna didn't. think I'm crazy no it didn't bother me at all and but every time I moved away from him I just kept going like right next to him again and um and so then I uh I it was just I was so drawn to him and we um and then one day I was sitting um and unbeknownst to me and we'd been hanging out a lot and unbeknownst to me he had already maybe he'd already asked my mom and dad if you could date I, me, I think, I think at I that had, point. I had asked your mom. Yeah. And um, and so... I, I asked her dad for her hand in marriage, but I asked her mom to date. Yeah. And um, I was... He had come over and hung out with the family for a while and then left and to work because he was at the time working at Disneyland and making really long drives to come to the acrobatic troupe, hang out with us and go to work at Disneyland, yeah. um, which I also thought was really cool that he worked at Disneyland. Um and uh and so i was sitting we hung there out. i left for the day yeah and my mom and literally i sat on the couch staring out the window and my mom was in the kitchen preparing dinner or whatever and i remember it got dark like that's how long i sat on the couch just like staring out the and i window. left probably early afternoon yeah so the and fact that she was on the couch and until I was it got dark was, thinking was about and i was thinking about him and i was talking to god and my mom leaned her head out of the kitchen and said, you really like him. And I said, yeah. And she said, I could see you marrying him. And I said, I know, me too. And then shortly after that, he came over and I had told the Lord, I was like, the man that I'm going to marry, I want him to come and ask me to be his girlfriend. As silly or as juvenile as that sounds, that's what I want. And, um, and I didn't tell him that or even my mom that I had asked the Lord for that. And uh, another day he came over and we were sitting on the couch and he reached over and he grabbed my hand and he kissed me and said, would you be my girlfriend? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and, and basically. And, and I brought her a single rose. Yes. And I brought her mama dozen. Yes. Well, yeah. So that, <laughs> that was that when he, he walks up, he's walking up and we're seeing him. And, um, and I was like, he's got, he's got flowers. He's got flowers. And I could see the dozen roses and I could see the single rose. The dozen roses went to my mom. Yep, yep. Smart man. Kevin Rogers and um and then the single rose went to me so uh he was honorable with me and he uh was just amazing and literally from and we I mean we talked about getting married pretty shortly right within two weeks within after, two weeks after, we after just... I asked her to be my girlfriend it was about two weeks later that I said by the way I'm in this for marriage if you're not into that, then we should probably end this. Right and I said, no, nope, I'm in it for marriage too. And I knew like that was always on my heart to find my soulmate and that that would be, that was the thing that I knew God was calling me to. And so, um, so that was, and I was like, yep, me too. And we have been to, and well, that is 20. So well, hold on. Okay. So not, not that I'm into numerology, but like I said, I was, I was nine when I asked my dad about having a girlfriend. She was nine when she wanted to pray me out of my engagement. Uh, and then I was 19. And then when she was 19 and I was 29. We got married. That's when we got married. Yes. So. Yeah. So we have been And married. now here we are, just about to celebrate our, our 19, 19 years married. married so. Yay. Yay. It's been so good. So thank you, uh for being on my podcast the real housewives of the kingdom he makes this housewife really happy and um thank you for just keeping jesus in our home and leading us well Absolutely. Thank and thanks you. for rambling on with me <laughs> <laughs> forever we, we do it pretty well <laughs> we do we do, we do. <laughs> all right everybody thank you for joining us and uh we just uh pray that your marriages uh will be enriched by the wisdom that we shared and that you will approach your marriage with joy and positivity and that you will ask god to be part of your marriage too 
Amen. Bye. <laughs> All right, so if you were wondering where the video went, uh, we have on no that idea. Last, we have no idea. The phone didn't the die. Phone, yeah, didn't die. Still has it just half got battery. tired of hearing us, I guess. Yeah, it just stopped recording. But uh, we decided to just keep it, so you got half of the video interview and audio for the rest, and, and a great picture of the two of us <laughs> at the end. Bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Okay, all you housewives, that's it for today. I'm truly grateful you joined us. If you know anyone who would be encouraged by this episode, you can easily share it by taking a screenshot and adding it to your stories or feed. You can also text it to a friend. New episodes are uploaded every other Friday. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch them all. You can find and interact with me on Facebook and Instagram at Married Rogers Neighborhood, as well as my website, which I linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed our conversation today, it helps so much if you could take a second to rate and give a five-star review. It really makes a huge difference for me in the podcast. Just remember, we are in this together. God loves you, and you are not alone. See you next time.